It's great to have you with us today. Colorectal cancer, it is the fourth most common cancer in the U.S., and it is the second leading cause of death from cancer. It affects people in all racial and ethnic groups and is most often found in people age 50 and older. But now, a disturbing new trend. Younger people are getting colon cancer. But why? Well, March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month, and today we're very happy to have with us a gastrointestinal cancer expert, Dr. John Marshall, Chief of Hematology and Oncology at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. Welcome, Dr. Marshall. Good Mel to see you. Melanie, thanks for having me. So colon cancer is going up in younger populations. Tell us what you're seeing. We all learned, back us old doctors, all learned that colorectal cancer was an older person disease, and what we're seeing is this shift. Now, we're doing better overall. It's very important for everybody to hear that through screening, through early detection, through better therapies, our outcomes for colorectal cancer are improving. But as we're making those improvements, we're seeing this shift in younger and younger folks. And to be quite honest, we don't really understand why. Is it that we're picking up more people? Are we just finding it? Or is there really something different out there in our world that's shifting this curve? How big are the numbers? Well, so not huge. And, uh, colorectal cancer as a public health problem is a huge problem. 150,000 new cases every year in the United States alone. If you look worldwide, more than a million and a half folks getting the disease. So major public health mm -hmm. problem. In terms of young folks now, you know, we do see uh, a, a decent percentage of folks um, in the under 50, but you know, we're also seeing the 20, 30 year old as well. Some of that's inherited, but some of it clearly is not. And so we need to understand better. We need to shift our awareness, really, so that when folks do come in with symptoms, they're not ignored, uh, they're paid attention to, screening, proper screening is done, and we detect these cancers earlier. So there is a hereditary factor. Yeah, just That's like with element. most cancers, we do know, you know, there's the, everyone knows about the breast cancer mm -hmm. gene. Angelina Jolie brings us that with the, the BRCA gene. Well, there's one for colorectal mm -hmm. cancer too. And it is a similar frequency, five, seven percent of all colon cancer is inherited. And those, of course, do get found earlier in younger folks. Um, but the majority of these folks are not inherited colorectal cancer. They're just picking it up somewhere along the way. What are are some of the reasons you may suspect could be contributing to this? I'm blaming it on uh, Starbucks and cell phones. No, I don't really know. I mean, we don't really know what it is out there. Um, overall, we're a healthier world, a healthier environment, people living longer, right? So we are doing a better job. People are suspicious of environmental uh, aspects. You know, we, we are what we eat to some degree. We all carry around a, a beautiful coral reef of bacteria within us, uh, the so-called microbiome. We're beginning to study that. Is it stuff we're eating? Is it the influence of antibiotics? Is it exercise, not enough exercise? We really don't know. Wow, there's just the gamut there to look at, That's isn't right. there? That'll keep okay. you busy for the next 50 it years. It should be. <laughs> Hopefully we figure it out yeah. before that, though. So, yeah. uh, you know, uh, along with the rise in uh, colon cancers among this younger age group, uh, comes health insurance yep. issues, and are, you, are are people who are under 50 uh, can will they be covered under their health insurance for a colonoscopy? This is a great question and a really volatile one right now. So screening healthy people, right? So you're just out there in the world. Your clock hits 50. You're supposed to go get screened. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't pick up any of these people. We have to prove that screening everybody at an earlier age would in fact be cost effective and risk effective too, right? Because screening tests, the classic in the United States is a colonoscopy, has risks. Other stool tests, things like that, much less risk, but have costs. So we have to balance these things. I think our biggest point, though, now is that younger folks, when they have a diagnosis, when they have a suspicion, docs and they alike need to understand that there might be something going on here. Go ahead and do the appropriate testing. Do you, does the medical community generally agree that this kind of testing needs to be done? Yes, it should be but, covered. but honestly, some of it is, you know, you're seeing you're in a busy emergency room and somebody comes in with bleeding and they have a hemorrhoid mm -hmm. history or they had some bleeding in the past. It gets sort of, uh, no pun intended, poo-pooed uh -huh. away. And so what we need to do is recognize that it's not always hemorrhoids and we need to do the next test. Yeah, I do think there's an increasing awareness, but we have pressures on us too as a health community to make sure we're recommending appropriate tests not to alarm folks unnecessarily. So there's a balance there. 
Let's talk a little bit about colonoscopies. Yeah. Um, people don't like getting them. I don't know why. People it's the most fun you'll ever off. have. Okay. Come on. What are so you what is the problem with this test? It's all about the prep. So one has to get ready for it. It's not as simple as, say, a mammography test where you can go and just get that on your, your lunch hour. You need to get ready for a colonoscopy. You have to prep the night before and clean out, if you will. You then have anesthesia, so you really mm -hmm. have to take a day off work or have to have people around to help you. Now you don't need them that often. Uh, we can argue that once every 10 years is enough for folks, so you do need to uh, spread them out a bit. Um, but I think it's just a hassle. There's also a fear. I mean, there's just a fear of any kind of procedure or test uh, uh, when, when, uh, that's a screen like this. So we need to push folks. I mean, I hang out with fairly educated, insured people, and yet they'll still come up to me and say, do I really need to do this? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, yeah, yes, you really do. Yes, well, at least once every 10 years. At least years, once every 10 years. And then is there a point at which you can stop it's having a, a colonoscopy? Also a very good question. So if you're 85 years old, should you have another colonoscopy? And this is, the jury's still out on this. Again, back to health economics. Is it worth it? Um, you know, I would argue that if you're early detection and prevention the disease it may be worth it stay out of my office is a yeah. very good motto and and so as much as possible even the elderly but we have even patients who've had prior colon cancer we have serious discussions when they're getting up in age should they have screening even though we know they're at somewhat higher risk so the colonoscopy um, detects uh, cancerous lesions or even a precancer lesion a polyp yeah okay so if there's a polyp it could be benign right. or cancer so if and if by removing the polyp you actually reduce the risk of cancer. It won't turn into cancer. So we know early detection of an early cancer is a good idea. But this is a bit different. This is keeping you from ever getting colon cancer. So again, to compare to mammography, mammography finds early breast cancer. This actually finds the step before that and keeps you from ever getting colon cancer in the first place. What can you do? to keep from getting colon cancer. Are there things we can we have, have control over in yeah. our lives? We, we want this. We want something that we can do to alter our outcome. And there are really three key things that we know can prevent colon cancer. The first is the hardest one, and that's exercise. We know that this helps a lot of things. There's very good data that it prevents colon cancer. We know that aspirin helps, a baby aspirin, in those people who've had colon cancer or polyps. There's very good evidence that taking a baby aspirin helps, and vitamin D. So keep moving, balanced diet, uh, those at risk of baby aspirin and some vitamin D. All right, eat your roughage. Eat right? your roughage, there you go. <laughs> All right, talk to us a little bit, Doctor, about uh, precision medicine and oncology and something that you head up. Yeah, this is um, really the future, we think, for cancer. We know that cancers are different. Not everybody's colon cancer, breast cancer, whatever, is the same. And even when we look at young versus old, we recognize that they look the same under the microscope, but when we do genetic breakdown of what's in those tumors, they're different. And we're only beginning, despite what the TV ads tell you, we're only just beginning to incorporate this kind of information into our decision making. What I really want is some sort of magic Harry Potter sorting hat that I could put on a a patient or a patient's tumor and tell me which what's going to happen to them are they going to be fine do they need chemo will chemo benefit them so this is where we are going with precision medicine better understanding what makes an individual patient's tumor tick and we at Georgetown MedStar are leading a nationwide front on this to try and collect if you will a big enough haystack so we can find the needles, the key needles that separate this person's cancer from that person's cancer. So we're not just trial and error medicining, we are giving what we call precision medicine. Wow, now is this different from immunotherapy? It is, so immunotherapy is another branch of therapies, if you will. We know our immune systems actually do see our cancers. And some of the new hot stuff is an ability to not only uh, let that immune system in, but to also continue to feed it. So there have been great successes in immunotherapy. That is true for a group of colorectal cancer patients where uh, immune therapy really knocks it out of the park. It's a great therapy, very low side effect therapy, uh, really the kind of magic bullets we're looking for. 
our job, again, in collaboration with other cancer centers around the country, is to extend that kind of treatment mm -hmm. to others. So, mm -hmm. how, you know, if we've got a slice of the pie, how do we make that piece of the pie bigger so that more and more people can benefit from immunotherapy and other novel treatments? And we talked a little bit about the hereditary risk, right. and um, you're using genetic factors right. to sort of determine that? That's right. So we can now look at tumors and say, no, you inherited this or you didn't inherit this. And, and then that also guides our, our therapies as well. All right, coming up, I know uh, you've got a race, a 5K that's uh, important. Nothing drives me crazier than the month of October when everybody's dressed in pink, including the Washington Redskins. So this is our month. March is, is our month, colon cancer awareness. And on March 20th, down on Pennsylvania Avenue, we'll have a great crowd uh, called Scope It out. It's, a, it's really a nice uh, fundraising and uh, community event for colorectal cancer, and so we encourage everybody to get out there and join us. And where can we get information about this? So it's event? on the Colon Cancer Alliance website, also known as Christopher Life, and if you go to this website, you can register and the like. It's on our website at the Ruish Center at Georgetown, so there are plenty of places you can find Is out there a fee to, to sign up? We want your money. Of, of course, course there's there a is. fee. <laughs> you want to sign up? We want you to build a team, and we want you to come down and do the 5K. It's going to be pretty weather, we always promise. Okay. It should be a great event. And if people just generally want some more information about colon cancers, where should they go? There are a lot of very good resources. I think the Colon Cancer Alliance is a nice advocacy resource. Our uh, Georgetown uh, Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center website would have great information. The National Cancer Institute, of course, always a good resource. March National Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Dr. John Marshall, thanks for coming in today and making time out of your very busy schedule. Thank we do you for appreciate it. Thank message. you.